it's my pleasure to introduce one of our own passionate people to you. Rachel Scott Everett is co-founder and creative director of Evergib, a nomadic creative studio that she runs alongside Brian Gibson, her partner in work and life. A champion of big ideas and, power, um, and the power of storytelling, Rachel believes creativity can be used as a force for good to improve the world we live in. Fun fact, Rachel and Brian are both Brand Center alumni and were at our first Creative Mornings and also volunteered and were um, part of a first group that helped get Creative Mornings Richmond up and running in, um, in this area. When Rachel is not working, she practices yoga and loves to dance any chance she gets. And um, if you get a chance to watch her salsa, it is amazing. Um, please stand and help me welcome today's CM Rhythm speaker, Rachel Scott Everett. <laughs> Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. It is really awesome to be here and very serendipitous too. As mentioned, I'm an alum of the VCU Brand Center, so it feels like a very full circle moment. Any brand fam? Yes, I see you. Awesome. Um, well, this school had a big impact on my life, both professionally and personally. Um, and when I think about rhythm, I think about my love of salsa dancing. Anytime I hear salsa music, I can't help but move, as evidenced by this video. All right. Thank you. That is me dancing in the streets of New York City with a total stranger. He was playing salsa from his car, and I couldn't help but join in. The reason I love salsa so much is that the rhythm makes me feel alive. But rhythm and that feeling isn't exclusive just to dance. Rhythm is literally everywhere. It's in music and art and nature. And one thing we hear a lot about is the importance of finding your rhythm basically figuring out how to live a life that's true to ourselves. And where we live and how we live and who we live with, that all influences our personal rhythm, which seems to work best when everything in our life is in sync. <laughs> okay, but seriously. Think about musicians playing in a band. Only when the rhythm of their instruments sync up do they create music instead of noise? Same goes for dancers. When the rhythm of their movements come together, they look cohesive instead of chaotic. In art and design, elements like colors and shapes create rhythmic patterns that give us amazing visuals. And when people sync up and rally around the same cause, our collective rhythm can even create social change. A life in sync is a life in harmony, one that's aligned with our values, feels purposeful, and gives us a deep sense of fulfillment. But since graduating from the Brand Center, I've learned that a life in harmony is less about finding your rhythm and more about creating it. In other words, it's not about passively sitting back and hoping you stumble on the life that you want. It's about going out and actively pursuing it. In school, one of my professors introduced our class to the author Joseph Campbell, who once said, people say that what we're all seeking is a meaning for life. But I don't think that's what we're really seeking. I think what we're seeking is an experience of being alive. When I graduated from the Brand Center, I felt alive. Aw. <laughs> I had a master's degree in advertising art direction and an awesome boyfriend, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but little did I know, to create my rhythm, I'd have to embark on a 15-year journey of new jobs, different cities, lots of travel, and lots of self-reflection. And just as I was getting started, 9-11 happened and the economy tanked. 
My new chapter seemed to end before it had a chance to begin. Ad agencies weren't hiring, and worse, many of them were laying people off. There were zero job prospects. Needless to say, it was not how I envisioned the start of my advertising career. California. That was my dream. I'd been an East Coast girl my whole life, and I was ready for something new. A new place with a new rhythm. Fast forward a few months, Brian and I attended a wedding and ran into friends whose parents had a guest house in Sonoma, less than an hour outside San Francisco, where some of the best agencies are. On a whim, I asked if they might consider letting us stay there while we looked for jobs. And to my surprise, they agreed. That one simple ask was all it took to change the course of our life and start a new rhythm. We packed up our car and headed west with no jobs lined up. I was excited and I was scared, but most of all, I felt alive. Three months after arriving in California, I got a call from an ad agency in Los Angeles about a junior art director position. I went down and interviewed and I got the job. Finally. <laughs> I was officially an advertising creative, and for those who don't know what that means, I was basically Peggy from Mad Men. <laughs> While working in LA, I created ads for national brands, went on some of my first TV shoots, and helped win new business. But after four years, despite the amazing opportunities, the perfect weather in Santa Monica, and a few celeb sightings, my life felt frenetic and out of rhythm. I was working all the time, and I justified the long hours because I was starting out in my career. At the Brand Center, I learned that creativity is a process and that it's important to love the process. But in the agency world, this is how the process felt like to me. So one day while I was out researching for a project, I came across this book, Vagabonding, An Uncommon Guide to the Art of Long-Term World Travel by Ralph Potts. His approach to travel was simple. Anyone with an independent spirit and an open mind can achieve their dreams of extended travel. I was totally inspired. Brian and I began saving up money and eventually we quit our jobs, sold everything we owned, and bought a one-way ticket to Europe. And I felt alive. From Portugal, we traveled for seven months through Western and Eastern Europe, as far south as the Greek Isles, as far east as Turkey, and as far north as Ireland. In our new rhythm, we developed a frugal traveling style that we affectionately called cheap and charming. We ate simply and rented rooms from locals who would look for backpackers at the train station. This was before the days of Airbnb. This way of traveling let us not only travel for as long as possible, but it also let us have more authentic experiences. In the words of Ralph Potts, vagabonding is about gaining the courage to loosen your grip on the so-called certainties of this world. It's about refusing to exile travel to some other seemingly more appropriate time of your life. It's about taking control of your circumstances instead of passively waiting for them to decide your fate. And, as much as anything, vagabonding is about time, our only real commodity, and how we choose to use it. After the trip, I felt rejuvenated and ready to get back to work. After all the journaling I'd done during our wanders, I also decided to change my focus from art direction to copywriting. And soon, I landed a job in New York City. While working in New York, I continued creating ads for national brands and traveling for TV shoots. I loved the energy and excitement of the city. From the subway and the 2 a.m. pizza slices to Central Park and our place in the village, which just happened to be the world's tiniest apartment. But after three years, once again, my life felt frenetic and out of rhythm. 
I also felt a bit unfulfilled, and I didn't know why. I was moving up in my career, but the process seemed to be beating me down, and it still felt like this. So I found another book, The Rough Guide to First Time Around the World. Are you seeing a pattern? <laughs> Be careful if you go into a bookstore. <laughs> Brian and I quit our jobs again, sold everything we owned again, and bought a one-way ticket to South America. And I felt alive. This time we traveled for over a year making our way through South America, North Africa, India, Nepal, Asia, Southeast Asia, and beyond. I quickly fell back into my nomadic rhythm, a rhythm that allowed me to feel present in daily life. We maintained our cheap and charming traveling style, eating street food and renting rooms from locals or staying in hostels. Many people think that long-term travel is one long permanent vacation where you sip cocktails on a beach all day long. But the reality is that much of our day-to-day -day life was devoted to basic survival. On a regular basis, we had to figure out public transportation, adapt to local customs, try to speak and understand multiple different languages, stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stick to our budget. But all the inconveniences were worth it for the freedom that I felt. Each day provided the opportunity to see something amazing try something new, and to learn about an entirely different culture. The places we went and the people we met added up to some incredible experiences. Experiences that not only gave me memories, but a whole new perspective on life. Traveling opened my mind and my heart to other ways of living. And more than anything, it allowed me to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. After the trip, once again, I felt rejuvenated and ready to get back to work. For the first time, Brian and I were hired on as a creative team at the same ad agency, which was in, of all places, Las Vegas. Crazy. Once again, we packed up our car and headed west. Once again, I was excited and scared, but mostly, I felt alive. That is until we actually got to Las Vegas. <laughs> and it felt like this. Of all the places we'd been in the world, living in Las Vegas felt the most foreign to me. The landscape, the casinos, and the constant ding of slot machines everywhere, even in the grocery store. I ignored feeling out of place and out of rhythm, and instead focused on our work. While working in Las Vegas, Brian and I headed up multiple travel and hospitality accounts, including the global launch of a $3.5 billion luxury resort opening in the Bahamas. In advertising, to have the opportunity to create a brand from scratch is a dream come true. For the next two years, we worked around the clock, developing ads, messaging, imagery, and more. The highlight was developing a short film based on the premise that every journey must come to a beginning. The film tells the story of a couple living life on their own terms as they travel to their next great destination. The purpose of the film was to establish a feel for the brand, get people excited, and of course, drive bookings before the official opening. But when the brand finally launched, the years of hard work really seemed to be worth it. That is, until three days before the grand opening, the resort went bankrupt. That was a good reaction. <laughs> Not only was it one of the biggest PR disasters in the travel and hospitality industry, our work would never be seen again. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut that short. <laughs> it was time to get off the hamster wheel. 
Brian and I gave our notice and we left Las Vegas. For the third time, we had quit our jobs and sold everything we owned. But this time, we didn't have a plan. Instead, we took six weeks to drive 6,000 miles around the country to do some serious soul searching. I knew that we couldn't keep doing what we were doing, starting new jobs, getting burned out, and quitting. After 12 years of putting up with the process, I knew we needed to figure out a sustainable way to live and work. Ideally, a way that could let me feel like I did when we were traveling, to have both the freedom and the fulfillment, and to feel alive every day. On that cross-country drive, among the raw beauty of nature, I returned to the words of Ralph Potts. Vagabonding is about taking control of your circumstances instead of passively waiting for them to decide your fate. It's then that I realized life isn't about finding your rhythm, it's about creating it. And there was only one place for us to go. The place where it all began and the place that felt like home. Any guesses? Richmond! It's here in Richmond that I began to take charge of my life and work towards a life in harmony. Through the power of connection and the support of community, I began to create my own unique rhythm. In 2015, Brian and I launched our own business, and this year, just like Creative Mornings Richmond, we celebrated eight years. Our nomadic creative studio combines our love of travel with our love of creativity. It lets us work from our home base here in Richmond or wherever we happen to be. Earlier this year, we spent a couple of months working remotely in Bali. In addition to more freedom, I also feel more fulfilled. As an entrepreneur, I'm able to choose work that aligns with my interest and more importantly, my values. More than any work for big brands, I'm most proud of the work that we've done for local and nonprofit organizations. Whether it's opening our minds through stories, uplifting our spirits through the arts, or connecting us to what matters, these are some of the brands that we've had a pleasure of working with and who are doing good in the Richmond community and making a difference in our lives. I'm also trying to take an active role in helping to shape this community by speaking out where I can and working towards a more inclusive, just, and equitable Virginia. In closing, I'll leave you with this. Success means different things to different people. For me, it's meant working to get closer to a life of freedom and fulfillment. It took me a long time to realize that how I was working was getting in the way of how I wanted to live. So listen to your gut, follow your heart, and create your own rhythm. And in doing so, may you truly feel alive. Thank you. Amazing. Um, we have time for a few questions, so I would love to have anybody who has a question. Carmel. Hi. Oh, sure. Oh, well, I was going to give it to you. <laughs> Might as well. Sorry. Yes, That's but all I right. think you could also. <laughs> uh, I just got off the road three months alone on tour. Um, so what I would love you to talk about for people who don't travel it as extensively or even our brief delightful moments is road magic. What can happen only when you allow yourself to wander and to roam? Thank you. Yes, that is excellent. People ask what the day to day is and I say it's basic survival, but we spend a lot of time wandering and I think that's something that we 
you know, when you're in your normal routine, you're checking off, you know, all your check boxes and your checklists. But when you're on the road in an unfamiliar place, you really have to be with yourself and your thoughts. And so there's a lot of magic, like you said, in that downtime of wandering and being on a bus for several hours or overnight or train. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> That's great. Other questions? I'm going to come to Gail and then Marin. I'll do a quick run. Good morning. I'm Gail Turner, and I want to first of all say I love the heart because what I want to talk about is the courage that it's taken to do this. You, you grew up, were there anybody in your world when you grew up who had this kind of, uh, we'll call it insanity? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, every family has their insanity, but no, no one had, no one, <laughs> no one seemed to have the wanderlust. And honestly, I didn't until um, we went out to California for the first time. I'd been in North, I was born in North Carolina and raised in Virginia, so I'd been here my whole life. And so that one trip was all it took. And I just, I know that other people can relate to this too. Once you get a taste of it, it's hard to get it out of your system. Marion, do you feel comfortable projecting? I would love to. Okay, feel free to stand if you wish. Hi, um, I'm Marion. Uh, thank you so much for this. It's amazing. Uh, I'm someone who's also lived in many places around the world, and so it's interesting and challenge sometimes to then be rooted in one place and feel a little bit restless. So now that you are rooted in Richmond, I'm curious how you deal with any like restlessness that comes up, or are you still like doing some traveling, or like what are ways that you keep Nourishing your your water lust, I guess. So she was okay. Got that I think book. I got all of it. Did you read it? <laughs> Sorry, feeling restless. Now you're rooted. In how do you combat that? Yes, that last. Right. Like, how do you keep finding wonder, like while you're here, rooted in Richmond? Finding wonder while you're rooted in Richmond. Yes, that is a great question. Well, I will say, like when we when we graduated from the Brand Center at the time you had to leave Richmond because there were no real job opportunities here. Um, and so I just couldn't wait to leave Richmond. And I will say after spending over 12 years away and having experienced different cities, I mean, this place is so special. It's got like the best of the best cities and um, it's more attainable, it's more um, accessible and it's more affordable. And especially after living in Las Vegas, I just had newfound appreciation. <laughs> Las Vegas has beautiful sunsets and my hair looked great all the time, but um, <laughs> it, it was just so foreign to me. And so coming back here really, I just felt like I could see it with new eyes. And it was, yeah, it's great. And, and I think too, just being able to now live um, in my own terms, live and work, um, that's kind of satiated a lot of that restlessness. Um, and the fact that we can travel and we always come back here and it just, it's just, it's a great rhythm. Yeah, it works for us. I will do mics. Katie and then Delinda, I'll do yours. Hi, good morning. Thank you for sharing your story. It's amazing. Um, I do have a question. Is anybody who is in a relationship, a long-term relationship, or has had to travel with other people, how do you and Brian remain in sync and keep your rhythm together, especially with all the journeys and sacrifices and changes that you had to make. She needs to answer oh. first. <laughs> Sorry, we only we only got one, Katie. Um, that's a good question, and Brian, I get asked that a lot. Um, I would say Brian is kind of my metronome in the rhythm of life. Um, he's always been very steady, the steady beat. <laughs> Um, and thankfully, our personalities um, and our work styles really complement each other. We're very, very different people, but it works for us both in, in life and, and with our jobs. That is very sweet. <laughs> Um, so thank you for sharing your journey, Rachel, from like big brands to like local nonprofits that maybe are not the big names that other people would quote unquote recognize. How have you um, navigated perhaps the FOMO of like leaving big agency, big brand work and the financial changes or the lifestyle changes? I'd just love to hear a little bit about how you navigated that and landed where you did, because I think sometimes there's pressure 
to do a certain thing or be on a certain journey. Um, and we were talking about like looking at the hamsters, like there's some hamsters that are running and they're fine and they're looking at you like, why aren't you with us? Or why do you keep falling off? And I have felt that personally. So I just would love to know like, how did you come to like your own rhythm and maybe some of the pressures around some of that and the changes that you had to make? That's a very good question, um, because I don't know if it was conveyed in the presentation, but I did have a sense of failure um, when I kept starting new agency jobs, and I just felt like I, it wasn't for me. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? Like, okay, maybe I'll change my focus from art direction to copywriting, and that'll do it. Okay, maybe I'll change cities, and that'll do it. And maybe now it'll, I'll have new work, and that'll do it. And um, so, when we started our own business, there were, it was a huge shift. First of all, financially, I mean, we didn't have stable income. So it was hard starting out and it was hard kind of, um, you know, building your business from the ground up. You do depend on community and that's what was here and the support of other people. And we also realized that we couldn't just work on nonprofits. It wasn't sustainable. Um, our biggest challenge as a two-person shop is our bandwidth. So we do still work for ad agencies, and that kind of satisfies that kind of buzziness, I guess. Um, and we've been able to work directly for some big um, companies as well, but we only work on a project basis, and that works for us. And that's not for everyone. Some people need the stability of knowing they have accounts and money coming in, and we just prefer to work on a project basis. Um, and the thing about our business is that we have totally different goals than other like typical ad agencies. We're not looking to expand, we're not looking to win awards, we're not looking to, you know, we don't have to satisfy a board, it's, it's on our terms. So that's been the most fulfilling, that and the freedom. I have a question for you. <laughs> so you were just saying that you know you get to kind of pick and choose and, and do that kind of stuff too. So what locally are you doing next that is filling your creative cup and how do people find you? Like which local organizations are we working on? Just whatever, what, what are you doing next that is filling your creative soul? Um, well, we just launched um, the rebrand for Orchard House Middle School, which is an all-girls independent school. And it is the coolest place. So if you have nieces or daughters and goddaughters who are possibly going to be entering middle school in fifth grade, definitely think about them. <laughs> um, and also we are working on a rebrand for Senior Connections, um, which is a local organization here. And I think I want clients are here, yeah. Um, and they're helping to redefine um, aging and ageism and, and <laughs> all the isms. Um, but I am filling my cup next by taking some much needed vacation. Uh, it's been a busy year, and so Brian and I are headed to Puerto Rico after Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much for being here. And sharing, sharing how you have created your rhythm in life and in work. I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs>